There are 46 political parties and 3,442 candidates in both counts, the highest in Papua New Guinea's political history. By vying for 111 parliamentary seats in the 2012 national elections, there are bound to be additional issues given to the crude arithmetic of such a high and tight competition. The latest twist is linked to Section 63 of the Organic Law on the Integrity of Political Parties and Candidates. The line that is most relevant reads, subject to subsection 2 on the date of the return of writs in a general election, the Electoral Commission shall advise the head of state of the registered political party which has endorsed the greatest number of candidates declared elected in the election. And the head of state acting with and in accordance with the advice of the Electoral Commission shall invite that registered political party to form the government in accordance with this section. This means that the party that wins the most seats through endorsed candidates gets to receive this invitation. The rest of Section 63 deals with other scenarios, and among them, the case where two or more parties get to win equal number of seats and the subsequent steps that are to be taken, or a case where the most successful party fails to master the numbers to form the government on the floor of parliament. The issue that has risen is that the People's National Congress Party is leading the count of having the highest number of seats. Now the PNG party has thrown the spanner into the works by claiming that the above provision is no longer applicable. The PNG party leader has not indicated how and why a section 63 can no longer be applied, except to say that MPs who are members of parties are free to join other political parties other than those that endorsed them in the election. Specifically, that the invitation to form a government is no longer tenable and therefore all business will now be sorted out on the floor of parliament through a majority vote. In that vein, the head of state will no longer have a role to play. Section 63 was not one of the areas struck out by the Supreme Court in July 2010. The only possible scenario to emerge allowed under the law would be where the most successful party in an election is unable to form a government if the party fails to master the numbers on the floor of parliament or decides against taking up the prime minister's post. Hence, section 63.7 would now be invoked where parliament would be required to elect a prime minister in accordance with standing orders of the parliament. The latest political horse trading indicates that O'Neill is working on a coalition with a view to mastering the numbers. One of the developments to have occurred now is where at least one candidate has decided to switch party alliances before writs are due back on the 27th of July. Dr. Alphonse Gelu, acting registrar of political parties, has strongly advised against such a move, since it works against the spirit of Olipek. He went on to indicate that the candidates for the 2012 national elections will be listed under the original list, whether party or independent, under the formation of the new government. All things considered, one thing is for sure. Dealing with the flaws of our political system, such as weak parties and struggling institutions, is one thing. Accounting for human behavioral issues is completely another kettle of fish. The OLIPEC will be reviewed after this election period. Going by present indications, the team tasked to do the review would need to bridge that divide with workable provision. It is important to note that the Integrity of Political Parties and Candidates Commission, the OLIPEC's implementing body, is not engaged on a one-man show. Thus, a successful implementation of a new version of the OLIPEC would also depend on related government agencies that have been charged to assist in the process. Meredith Kusa, National MTV News.